Hey guys, what's going on? It's Becky and Cal here, and welcome back to another video on the channel. So, today we played a game of Mono Red Aggro against Simic Ramp. So, Simic Ramp is playing so well currently in the Mythic Championship 7. By the time this video goes out, I think the top 8 finals will be on. Um, but this deck seems to play really well against it. So, just quite a lot of low aggression. Um, not low aggression, sorry. A lot of aggression start with low toughness creatures, just but lots of them swinging in wide. Uh, the key is to basically kill them before Nissa hits the battlefield, and sideboarding is based quite a lot around that. Um, but with that being said, please subscribe, leave a like, drop a comment, and let's get into the video. We will play first this game. Keep the hand. We've got three lands. Some nice playable spells. Okay, so it might be that we're coming up against Simic Flash here or Simic Rump or any of the decks which are going on in. Oh, what's the name of it? Mythic Championship 7 currently. Leave a comment down below what you're thinking of that tournament currently. I'll. I quite like it. I find it's quite enjoyable to watch. So Paradise Dread. Okay, so what we can just do here is we'll swing in with the knight. If he wants to block it, he can. But what's more common, like has just happened, is I can just buff this up to 5 and then play it. So next turn I'm presenting 6 points of damage, but it will be an additional. Play the Torbram. He's probably got a wolf in hand, he might have counters, uh, counter magic, that's fine. So this is to see what it does. Okay, so it's kept on the top. So I don't ever like it when players keep their spells on the top. It always kind of scares me a little bit. Just because I know it's something pretty good. It might have been that it was the Fabled Passage, just allowing him to get the additional land. He's got a brazen borrower. Light up the stage. That's kind of the key play here. And turn. So if he sacks it and makes himself a wolf, I will just double stomp it. See, this is what I'm on about. So in this situation now, I can uh, stop and stop. He's got no mana to uh, get rid of it. And then next turn, I can just play double Bone Crusher Giant. This, uh, he shakes the world. Well. She may shake the world, but... This is on an adventure, right? Yeah. Does he want to block it? Okay, that's nice. So he's got seven mana open to him next time if he only needs to have one blue. The land fights for us. Maybe he's got a Gaddick or something. Okay. 
What's he going to do? So he's got two matter open, so he could quench me. So let's go to combat. We'll swing it at him for uh, four points of damage. And the next turn, we're just hoping. Oh, just to swing it with a little bit more, get a bit more punch going. Fast attackers. So, theoretically, we just want to be getting rid of the green mana. <sighs> Next turn, if we get a slaying fire or something. Okay. Very champion. Two attackers. Yeah, that's fair enough. I did kind of expect that play. I just kind of wanted to get him in like range if you know what I mean so next turn if he okay so choose to scry so maybe so what I'm looking for is just to get within slaying fire range here I get rid of all of his blockers. Next turn he can, if he chooses to, search for all of the forests in his deck. He's got five mana open to him. Here we go. It, this, it, this is happening. This is happening. I was hoping that we'd get a better... Yeah, lands have indestructible. <laughs> It's all forest stuff. And what this also does is it will thin his deck. So he just gets just gets pure value. He might have removal spells in hand.
So we're just looking for one card pretty much, the Slaying Fire. He's got 12, he's got 22, 23 mana open. No, we can still win this. We, they're, they're still away. Pass to blockers. See, we can still get this slave fire. There's, there's always there's always a way. I mean, sometimes in magic there isn't a way, but in, the, in this scenario there's always a way. Light up the stage. Do you have a counter? Do I have a slang fire in the grave? No. I'm not sure why he wouldn't just counter. Okay. Let's concede. Go to sideboarding. With a sideboard, all I want to do basically is just make my deck quicker. Um, I also add, so I drop a shot from other coil. That's just because this can kill a land. And then I also drop a, a bone crush giant. They don't trade that well with the lands, and also <coughs> these stomps aren't all too useful in this matchup. At least not as useful comparatively as the Chandra and the Lava Coil are. Of course, Fry only deals damage to white or blue um, planes, planeswalkers or creatures, so this deck avoids that uh, with Nyssa. Um, Nyssa pretty much is the antithesis of what I don't want to be playing against. But I feel I can come back from this position uh, to at least rival this guy, this guy in this game. First, all right. This this is a good hand. The thing with this deck I'm playing against is it's a very slow deck, and it's but I mean aggro should be its counter. Like this deck should look at my aggro deck and be like, oh no, no, I don't want to be playing this. Does it though? Uh, not really. Hopefully it's another tap land here. If it's another tap land, I'll make use of um, that by playing the Bone Crusher Giant. If I draw a Chandra load, that will be played instead. It's probably more likely he'll just play a forest or an island here though than play one of his untapped sources. He might also have a castle of Antress in hand which would come in tapped because that Temple of Mastery doesn't actually class as a um, island. What can he do with... can he unsummon? Okay, there's the Temple of Mastery so my Bone Crusher Giant will be coming in next turn. And love struck beast. Okay. <coughs> Chandra. Light the flame. No? Swing it for everything. Yeah. Deal a total of four points of damage. Um, that's if he blocks one of them with the soldier. I was expecting him to block the scorch bitter. That's why he only said four. Because that's kind of a card he wants to get rid of. 
if Bone Crusher Jar gets played, then all I do is I just create. Create two tokens. And then next to combat, and I'll just swing in with these two. If he blocks one of them, um, then it's. Well, he is going to block one of them. So next to damage, and then I'll lava coil it. Actually, what I might as well do is I haven't got a land this turn, so if I love um, use this. I didn't actually get a land, but I'm kind of hoping for one now so I can put that tall brand into play. And also having that tall brown in the board there might actually encourage this guy to hold up some removal spells. Paralyzed Druid. Okay, so. Next combat. All attack. Let's have a go at playing the Scorch Bitter. He could probably only have a quench here, so I'm not that worried about. Yeah, that's a quench, that's fine. Next turn, I'll be able to hit him for another 4 damage if he does nothing as well. Maybe he plays. Sure, what he could play here. Nissa. Nissa coming down is. That's a threat. <laughs> actually, no, Nissa here is actually quite good for us. Um, the land comes down. Scorched Bitter and then what we'll do here is we'll just go in for um, into face because uh, we can deal 5 damage to him via face and then next turn we can also swing in for 2 points of damage um, unblockable and we can also uh, Bone Crusher Giant so he's going to need 1, 2 or maybe 3 counters because we can also minus a Chandra to get uh, oh we don't even have a shock in the board Okay, that makes things a little bit more difficult. But I think here we just go wide and win. Okay, so he can actually trigger here, so maybe it's Castle Vatress that was giving him that ability, but next combat, we'll all attack. Next to blockers. Then what we'll do is we'll put up the Rimrock Knight. <laughs> okay, yeah, he wants that dead. He he wants that dead pretty. Frostrock damage. No. If 
he's got a quench in hand, I lose. But there we go, and that is it. So, basically just waiting as long as possible in order for him to uh, tap that mana and scry it just to get in for the final two points of damage. That was a really nice game, a really nice example of how this deck should play. So, we're going to game number three now, and hopefully we can clutch this win. If he gets stuck on mana, it is Simic Ramp, but there is always the possibility that he could be um, mana screwed. And we're just kind of hoping for that. We'll have to see what he does with his hand. So we're kind of focusing on this part of the screen. He's kept it. So we'll keep. Well, it's not that we would have dropped it if he hadn't kept it. But this is a really nice hand. So it plays out like this. So, to Scorch Bitter, and we're going to just kind of do our own thing this game. We're not really going to focus on as much interaction, at least until we get the Runaway Steam Kid out. That's kind of the key. The key here, he might have a Grow Spiral, he might have a Paralyzed Druid. I'm not sure why he didn't attack with a Soldier there. It might just be because he doesn't want me attacking him with a Scorch Bitter. That's fair enough. Maybe he's got a Quench here. Okay, he doesn't have it. So... That's so he doesn't have a quench or else he would have quenched there. So what I've actually got is I've got a notebook to the side of me and I'll write down um, I'll write down all of these things. So these are the things you should kind of be taking in when you're playing magic. Um, the way they your opponents play and how that could actually influence what um, what their hand actually is. So if I get my pen and I'll just quickly scribble down no quench so this turn if he plays land he might be struggling because he might have a temple of uh, master in hand maybe he's also got a brazen burrower or something along the lines and he's just wondering how he structures his play if he's got a brazen burrower i would be more inclined i'm not sure what he has to he's like looking over my cards he might just be reading them seeing what they do kind of structuring and ordering okay grow spiral Okay, there we go. So he's not going to have any real untapped mana this turn. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to stomp the little guy. That's basically just um, allowing my Scorch Bitter to get in for extra damage. And also what I can do here is I will light up the stage at the end of my turn just to try and find some additional mana to go off. But no, I don't get the additional mana, but that is fine. This turn he'll probably just play the Love Struck Beast, but what will happen is I will then shock Lava Coil and then I'll have an additional free mana to be able to play. Um... Okay. So I'll still do the same thing. I will shock it. Okay, free damage. I'll remove three counters. I will lava coil. Killing it. Then I'll get Chandra. And I'll buff up the Chandra and I'll swing in for five points of damage. I don't really want to be swinging in with the Scorch Bitter just to. Uh, prevent it from being blocked by the soldier so five points of damage here is is really it, it looks nice for us uh, also the two points of runaway steam kid that looks just as nice maybe the runaway steam kid doesn't last this turn depending on what he's got the simic decks don't usually have much interaction with things which are already on the board it kind of just uh, relies on um, playing already well removing or uh, what's the word countering spells which you already have so he might be looking at bouncing this to a hand with a brazen borrower and then countering it on the way back down which is always possible or he might just be seeing as to what spells he plays all right so he's got the love struck beast coming in um 
how do I order my plays here? That's the question. So actually what I'll do to try and get rid of this is I'll just Chandra next to combat and I'll swing in the two. He can choose to block both of them if he wants to. He chooses not to. So that will leave a light up the stage for me. I get the third counter, so I've now got five mana. Um, resolve that. So I've got four mana. And I've got um, a four mana worth of spells before Runaway Steam can triggers again. And then what I'll actually do is I'll play Tasting Kin, play a land, I think it's key here just to get everything I have onto the board, so I'll get rid of all the counters on that. Then next turn I could swing in, activate the Castle Embreath. And he'll have to block these two creatures at a minimum to survive. But so say he has a night pack ambusher, that's an extra um, blocker. But I will Chandra to get Chandra comes down to create two more wall ones. And then I'll be able to buff up everything so I'd only have to have four things go through. And I've got four, seven. So he has to play three creatures for it to stop what's about to happen. Okay, let's see what he does. Next to blockers. Yeah, and he concedes. So there we go. I managed to win that game. So the modern red deck against this more um, longer, more drawn out Civic ramp decks um, is pretty favourable just because they take a lot longer to get going, as I just said. And these decks are really fast, punchy. We get um, presence onto the board to start with and just keep going in with that. So like I said, probably um, adding in a, an extra lava coil to deal with um, threats such as the lands from um, Vanessa and also it helps for a two for one with uh, Love Struck Beast should I have these one ones from Chandra and sideboard to go to Chandra is also really nice because it's hard for them to deal with um, uh, non-creature permanents on the battlefield but and it's just recurring damage over and over that can help trigger things like um, light up the stage to help get the runaway scene can go but yeah, so that has been the um, that has been the games. Thank you guys ever so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, comment, all of that stuff, and I'll be back with another video for you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.